Hey guys, Krakakon here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade. Now as a huge Warhammer 40k fan, I've had my eye on this for a while, but I haven't picked it up until very recently because I was discouraged by the negative and mixed reviews I saw on Steam. A lot of the reviews were for graphical glitches, server lag, and some balancing issues. While some of those are still present, I found a very enjoyable game. I recently saw it on Humble Bundle for just under $10 in the second tier and figured it was a good ch uh, chance to give it a shot. So I'm really glad that I did because I found a very enjoyable game, and I'm sure a lot of you will too if you give it a chance. The game normally re retails at $50, so if you can find it on sale, that's a good time to pick it up. So now, let's get right on into the review portion of the video. Some of the complaints against the game are valid, and I've experienced some lag, as well as some issues as seen here, where sometimes units skip to the end of their flight or melee animations, which can make them hard to track as a ranged character. But none of this has kept me from enjoying the game, and I've already sunk a lot of time into it since picking it up. I also enjoy the art style and the graphics, which really make you feel like you're a part of the Warhammer 40k universe. This game really shines when you get into situations where you're defending points with your team or you're pushing objectives to take them from the enemy. Battles can get intense quickly as bullets fly through the air and you push forwards with your fellow Astartes. Grenades feel like they have a good impact as bodies go ragdolling through the air. So the combat mechanics are very enjoyable. One of the reasons I was interested in the game is that it reminds me of Warhammer Space Marine, a game that I played back on the Xbox 360. The graphic style and the gameplay mechanics are very similar, which is a good thing because this game was very enjoyable. But Eternal Crusade has a lot larger scale and vehicles to add into the mix, so it has a lot more variety. There are several game modes available, mainly variations on a standard capture and hold mode. In some, the first time you capture a point, you gain extra time within which to secure the outpost. In some, the defenders have a limited number of respawns before running out on that point. And there are also larger siege battles. In those, they have large walls and gates from, with, from which to try and repel the invaders. So here we secure the point and that objective. The maps are rather large, allowing for opportunities for flanking attacks and smaller skirmishes. Here we'll engage an opponent that was sniping our forces from atop this ruined bridge. And as you can see from the eagle on my back, I'm a squad leader leading Bravo squad to victory against the traitorous legions. There's no story, so you can just make up your own as you go along, as I just did. But there are executions in the game, which add a nice touch. You can create up to four characters of one of the four classes. Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Orcs, and Eldar. And within each, you can select a sub-faction, uh, like a chapter of Space Marines for those factions, but that affects your armor coloration as well as the quotes that you say in battle. Since filming this part of the video, I've created characters of each faction and found that they each play differently and have different weapons available to them. They also each level up separately and gain requisition points to buy new gear separately. 
I think it is a nice feature that you can select your character and really attach to them and join battles as them instead of being randomly assigned one. The game also features a cooperative mode where you team up with other players to take out endless hordes of Tyranid or complete objectives in destroying their hive. So I've been a fan of horde modes since Gears of War 2 and also the last stand mode in Dawn of War 2. So I'm happy they added this game mode in and I hope that they continue to develop it. It could greatly benefit from some more diversity and maybe even some additional foes. You start the game playing some of the default classes, but as you level up and purchase more gear with requisition points, you unlock new weapons, modifications, and trinkets for your armor that you can use to create your own classes customized to your playstyle. This is only limited by loadout points, which is the maximum amount of gear you can carry. Advancements can help with this as you continue to customize your character towards your certain playstyle. There is a world map that you can use to see the progress of the different campaigns amongst all the factions raging on the planet, as well as select from the two different layer and horde modes for battling against Tyranids. There's also a garrison mode where you can learn tips and how to play each class. There's a competitive guild v guild mode and you can also click on certain battles for your faction and join a fight if you want to fight a particular foe. And here we see the advancement. There are many different things to put points into to specialize your space marine. And there is in-game purchases with real money, but it seems like they give you 20,000 of those points, which is about $20 worth. As development of the game continues, I'd like to see more maps, more factions like the Tau, and more vehicles like Dreadnoughts for the Space Marines or Chaos Space Marines, as seen here in another clip from the game Space Marine, or Killicans for the Orcs. So in conclusion, the game does have some issues, but I think there's still a lot of fun to be had, especially if you're a fan of the Warhammer 40k universe like me. It also gets some bonus points for helping me relive some of the fun from the Space Marine multiplayer from back in the day. So that's going to do it for this review. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Leave a like or a comment if you'd like to see more con reviews. And I'll hope to see you guys on the battlefield.